Keisha. Good morning. Alan. How's it going? Man, you know what I was thinking, by the way, you two guys, I was thinking about you two. When the book is written about like national, about this timing national, <laughs> I think it will be written because I think something special is happening here. I think you two guys are going to have like a place in history forever. Oh my gosh, well, like the corner that you guys have built in this chapter of national music history is significant, guys. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would, it would be nice to be thought of for an extended period of time forever, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, the, just the first time would do. <laughs> Well, you guys are the trenches, so, you know, I appreciate that humility, but I, by the way, you know, a matter of time, it, it comes out uh, in a couple of days from when we're taping this. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, thank you. But it strikes me, guys, and, um, I, and I was thinking about you, East Nashville, Virginia, growing up, like both of your families, I, I would imagine they always supported kind of like your musical dreams. Uh, would that be accurate or not so much? To an extent, yeah. I mean, for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think, I think same. I, you know, I didn't really cut well. I didn't really come from a super musical family. My aunt on my mother's side, and I are the only two professional musicians, um, and and we and we definitely were kind of like uh, you know anomalies in both of our households. My little brother plays, but um we were definitely encouraged, but I I think we were I grew up in kind of an atmosphere where it was like it was definitely encouraged, but the possibility of like actually doing it for a living um was sort of not something that like we could really comprehend. Right. It just didn't, you know, it seemed like uh, you can see that other people do it because we have television, but, um, but, but it didn't seem like some, someone in your household would be capable of that or, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I need you give to you were saying mean church, you were yeah. doing all this stuff, but what I love about your story, Keisha, is, um, you know, you did practice it from a young age with your family, but right. you're calling. We've talked about this before. It's fascinating. Like you want it to be like your public policy. Yeah. You want it to be in law school. I did, yeah, yeah. And you actually like started that journey. Like. I did. Yeah. I um, paged at the Capitol when I first got to Nashville. I don't know. I started working in politics when I was probably 15. So, um, yeah, I wasn't even old enough to vote when I was working at polling places and hanging out with the elderly pretty much <laughs> is what that was. I think the average age of like a poll worker was like 71 when mm -hmm. it was like 15. That, was... that sounds, that sounds right. Yeah. It was interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, uh, wanted to do that. I'm happy that music kind of found me. Alan found me in the midst of trying to make those changes of what do I really want to do? You know, that's interesting. Because, yeah, you would have thought that, like, you know, I, I, this is your purpose. Yeah. Much like Alan. I was listening to um, one of your older records from way back to Ed 26. Oh, my goodness. And uh, I, was, I was listening to that, like, a couple of days ago, just kind of, like, for research and stuff. And, you know, you, you were young and stuff, Alan, but it was like, man, like, you could tell that this is what you were meant to do. Like, you could just hear it in between the songs that this is what you were meant. You know, your purpose. Oh, that's, um, I, that's funny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, it's, well, you know, it's like when you listen to the stuff that you do when you're still kind of trying to figure it out, like, I mean, I, you know, I still love some of those songs. We'll play them sometimes like in Lady Couch and, and I'll do them, you know, like when I do solo gigs, but, uh, I still like, when I listen to that record, I'm like, Hey, you maybe should have thought about going to graduate school. <laughs> like, <laughs> That because you just, you just don't you're self-critical like, oh yeah 100 percent. you know i i feel like i you know the on the positive side of things i feel like i'm always learning and i always want to learn and try and you know incorporate as much new stuff as i can into what i'm doing but on the uh you know on the other the other side of that coin is that i you know i, I don't ever feel like i have earned the like uh you know, the er, like earn the right to be, you know, kind of like what I was saying about growing up, like earn the right to do this yeah. or whatever, you know what I mean? So, oh, well, there was confidence. Yeah. It, it sounded like confidence. Well, thank you. But, um, <laughs> let me ask you, you know, about 
some stuff that came in that album. Uh, Alaric, that's right. Uh, you know, since I've met you, you're a great friend and you're such a beautiful soul. Uh, but this really transformational period in your life, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, your mom passed two weeks before you moved to Nashville. Right. Yeah. Back in the you know, 2007. What, what a chapter that, that, that must have been on a personal level. I mean, what, like when, when, when I ask you about like that, those two weeks, those three weeks, like what, what comes to mind? Oh man. You know, well, like when I think about that, like sort of like month between like, like mother's day week when she passed and then like we, when I, you know, got like got down here and everything. I mean, it, there's not, it's like, it's such a, it's such a blur because it was just so chaotic and there, you know, and there was so much going on and so many different kinds of, you know, emotions and, and all of that. And, uh, and so I don't really look back on that time in like I don't have any clear like it's not it's not a clear memory I think when you go when you go through trauma like that whether it's like you know physical or emotional there's a certain amount of like shock that happens like you know your body kind of protects itself from itself and so like I have you know I'm not like completely disassociated from it but you know i can remember like events and hangs and and you know like the drive down and little things like that yeah. but i but i don't really it's not like in a chronology like if i were to write like my, my memoir like that section would definitely be more feeling and less detail sure. you're um, yeah and uh i would people to the all of keisha let me ask you this because and, and i have to give you kudos to this it is so incredible that, you know, I've met you for almost five years now, four years, and you're always in such a beautiful state. Oh, and I may have told you this, I probably think I'm tooting your horn, but I, I mean it. No, but the I more I travel it. and the more I meet and the more everything, the more that like... So I was like, like do, you do you mean like Oregon? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you know, like the, the more that I appreciate, the, you know, souls like you. And, and the reason why is because you live in an emotional home mm -hmm. that is of joy, of, of gratitude, of, of happiness. Doesn't mean that you don't have days of depression, of anger, of uh, whatever resentment. We all do, but you always come home, yeah, and your home you. is your home is a beautiful. Thank you. I guess the question is, how? Like because that I know is not automatic. You have to train yourself. It is a habit. How have you been able to live in this beautiful state? I appreciate you saying that. I don't necessarily see myself in that way. So, I don't, um, yeah, thank you for saying so. I think. The one thing that is most important to me is just being Keisha every day. So, you know, if I'm having a bad day or something's wrong and you ask me how I'm doing, I'm going to be like, this is what's going on. <laughs> you know? So just always kind of being in that honest state of like, you know what, today shit's not going, right? Go ahead. Um, and I think that kind of gathers the calm. The honesty is being where you are when you are in it. Yeah. It's kind of the awareness. Just, yeah, I love it. All right, the new album, software album, so damn good, Alan. First of all, congratulations, guys. Like, mm, it was, I mean, the songwriting is great, the production is great. Um, I mean, how do you guys feel about it at this point? You know, now that the baby's about to fly to the world. I uh, I, I listened to it uh, for the first time in a couple of months um you know other than they like uh the little snippets of the single that that you know every time that social post comes up on instagram um yesterday i, I sat down with uh with dave brown um from basement east mm -hmm. and and we listened to it from front to back and that was the first time i'd done that in a while and i was just uh really really um in awe like I, every other record that I've been a part of, you know, um, as a, as an artist or as a producer, or as just, I came in and shook the maracas on a, on a single or something, you know, like I, when I hear it back, I kind of listen to, or not listen, I don't actively listen for, but I, you know, I hear like, how much better it could have been if, you know, I'd had the time to do this or, you know, been able to fix this or anything like that. Or, 
Um, you know, but when I was listening to it yesterday, I was just like, man, I like, I, I would put this record on for fun. Like I would, I would go see this band, you know, and, and I, I've always felt that way about us, but I feel like this record specifically, you know, really shows how we've grown up together and um and dan did a really good job dan davis who produced and engineered it um he did a really great job of sort of like capturing you know the thing we do that endears us to one another and to audiences in a way that like i wasn't really sure was possible ever going to happen in a studio wow. you know yeah so I, i'm i couldn't be more pleased with it you really captured the magic of lady couch how was the recording at Southern Ground, Keisha? Yeah, it was awesome. Because I remember I, I talked to you when you were in it and you had your eyes were sparkling. Yeah, we had a great time. I mean, honestly, it was really nice to have the entire band in that room together in that space. No, no, I mean, that like that room was really designed for a, a band like us. Like, there, you know, there's the three different isolation booths. So like Keisha, not, Keisha was in one, Ray, the drummer was in one, I was in there with acoustics and electrics and vocal mic, and then everyone else was in the center, you know, playing around, e playing with each other. And, um, and so it was, it was great. It was great. Yeah. We were able to do, I mean, pretty much all of the, all, you know, all of the basic tracks live, like we didn't do very many um fixes you know it was mostly just adding things here and there on overdubs like we were able to really yeah i if i could work there every day i 100 percent would yeah. i love that room sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you no i love it um let me ask you guys about the artwork and you know you shared it with me a few months ago and i was just like flabbergasted from the second it came out uh i can't stop looking at it um yeah <laughs> i was the other day i was <laughs> we were like in the car just like 20 minutes looking at all the details oh yeah there you there's like well, well paul dempsey is is the name of the artist and he um he's uh he's a good friend and his son jake is is a good friend who's played uh in bands with on and off you know around and with me like all through growing up and stuff he back home in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, and uh, he put in like all these crazy Easter eggs and all this other, just, he's just the best. I, th I feel like he's kind of become like our, our neon park, you know, like we get the little feet comparison a lot. And I think that he's definitely like, he's, you know, he, he's the one making those album covers and, and kind of, and, you know, creating the the brand and always coming up with something just a little bit weirder for the next one and a little bit weirder for the next one. So, yeah, well, I would love Paul. He's he's awesome. It's like a scavenger. It really is. It really is. My favorite is the, um, in the, like the tr the wood trim on the antique sofa where it just says "Lord of Mercy." <laughs> I was like, that's so rad. Like <laughs> cut. Well, guys, thank you. I think you're going to play a song for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, just let me leave you with this. I mean, obviously, you got to take this on the road. Can't wait. Um, you know, what's the plans for the rest of the year with this beautiful album, Keisha? Oh, man, we're going to take it to as many people in a month. Spread the gospel. Spread the Spread the good word. I think we need it. I think this year we need it. We need that lady. Man, it's good. You know what? This year is we need some of I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll run for office or something. <laughs> being that other is based on this year. Uh -huh. Man, we'll uh, we'll see we'll see everybody on the road. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. Hi, we are Lady Couch and this is Seasick. <laughs> There's a lady down the street. She drops by to check on me from time to time. We chat over coffee About the clouds gathering in 
in our minds She smiles when it's time to leave Turns her brown eyes to her feet And takes another pull From a fancy cigarette She pets the dogs and wraps her arms around them Like she may not come back We're all seasick from sailing through this storm We don't understand We're closer than we realize To the shore, we're almost on dry land well, I can hear her singing through the whistles and the sirens and the city life outside And it's comforting to hear her voice and know I am at home She relies on her senses Senses never seem to steer her wrong knows what to say to remind me we are not alone and we're all seasick from sailing through this storm we don't understand we're closer than we realize to the shore we're almost on dry land Sometimes we need our friends Life is hard, we are not meant to do this on our own Everybody needs someone to come along To show them they are loved We're all seasick from sailing through this storm We don't understand We're closer than we realize to the shore We're almost on dry land We're all seasick from sailing through this storm We don't understand We're closer than we realize to the shore We're almost on dry land Closer than we realize to the shore, almost on dry land. We're closer than we realize to the shore, we are almost on dry land. Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Subscribe here for the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from J-Rod Concerts Media.